Hello and welcome to your favorite Indian television show. Of course, it's Aussie Indian. Thanks for your company. Hope you have been enjoying all the local community news, the news from India as well as Bollywood gossip and Indian fashion we bring on our show. Thanks to our media partner, we are able to bring all these uh, fantastic video clips from India. Well, in this show, we are talking about a very serious issue. It's called the human trafficking. If you think that the slave trading has ended in this world, think again. It is still happening in some of the developing countries, including India, and one brave woman called Anita Kanhaya has taken this head on. And uh, she has started a project called Freedom India Project, and she is the founder director. And we are going to bring you an exclusive interview with Anita in segment one. In segment two, we are going to bring you all the new release Bollywood movies as well as some breaking news from India. And in segment three, as we usually do, we bring you some colorful and glamorous Indian fashion. Now let's get straight into the show. As I mentioned before, human trafficking is still a very big problem around the world, including India. Many of these criminals who are engaging in this kind of activity are uh, still going ahead with their uh, business uh, as usual. And one woman, Anita Kanhaya, has taken this issue head on. And uh, she has started a project uh, called Freedom Project India to expose these criminals. And uh, Anita agreed to talk to a staff reporter, Ursula Melham. Let's take a look at part one of that interview with Anita. And today I am joined by the incredible founder and director of the Freedom Project India. It's Anita Kanaya. Thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you taking the time to come and meet with us on Aussie Indian. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So Anita has flown all the way from India to come and talk about the works, about the projects and the good work that it does, as well as share some insight as to how we can all get involved uh, into impacting the lives of young women and children uh, in India. And now, can you please talk to us about what the general uh, issue and what is the core of human trafficking? Um, so human trafficking is, um, as the word signifies, the sale of human beings, um, which is incredible to think of in this day and age where um, we believe that slavery has been abolished, but it's reinvented itself in the form of human trafficking. And India is one of the um, source and destination countries which ranks among the top three um, for people being trafficked to and from. Um, when we say human trafficking, uh, it's difficult to understand when you haven't really seen it, but it's women and children mostly who are vulnerable to this and um, who have been, um, you know, sold into this. And um, the conditions, deplorable conditions, um, whether it's being sold for labor or whether it's being sold for commercial sex, um, they are cooped up in places. I've um, seen a girl who was uh, put in a dog cage and you know just kept there um, to break her will um, so that they could abuse her and she was only about 11 um, so if it's that or if it's factories where yeah. children have been kind of herded into and they work 14 hours they sleep there they work there so really deplorable conditions something they never agreed for yeah. and have been forced into or coerced into um, that's really what human trafficking is okay and Anita, as a loud and active voice um, for the poor and the oppressed women and children of India, what is the biggest issue right now? I know that the Freedom Project is a not-for-profit organisation to end slavery uh, and empower communities. What is the number one priority for you right now? Well, I think, um, you know, there are a few priorities, um, but to end slavery, it really will require all of us working together, yeah. uh, considering the fact that human trafficking is... Um, I think in India, the number one social issue, um, the ease with which human beings are bought and sold and the apathy um, that exists simply because it still doesn't concern me. Yeah. You know, it's still out there. Um, a lot of people still believe it's very rural based and it's, um, you know, um, involving more illiterate people than literate. But the truth and the reality is that it's crawled in to our backyards. And if we don't do something about it, um, you know, raising an awareness, that's why I'm here and exactly. that's why, yeah. uh, you know, we're doing this talk is really to create that awareness that uh, we need to talk about it. Yeah. We need the word out there 
uh, we need to be able to convey that message to people in vulnerable situations. Uh, what are they looking out for? Yes. Um, what should they be careful about? And so um, I think that's our number one priority is to put the message out there and to prevent it. Because we do do rescues and we do rehabilitate victims and survivors of trafficking. Yeah. But that makes it so difficult to work with them because of the trauma that they've endured during yeah. that time. So if we can um, build the next generation, the youth, to really do something about this, spread the awareness, social media, um, you know, hold um, even home um, events to be able to create that awareness among friends and um, colleagues in workspaces yeah. um, to talk about it. Yeah, well, it's going to make a change. Yeah, definitely no excuses in this day and age. And it all started for you one night 14 years ago. Can you tell our viewers about that night? Yeah, um, so about the time that you're talking about, I had just had my first um, baby girl. Oh. And she was, I think, about two years old. And I had a phone call this um, night, and it was late in the night. Mm -hmm. I was in Bangalore, in India, and um, I had this call from a friend who was working in this um, line, a lawyer. And he called and said, there are these two girls who have managed to escape from their trafficker and are hiding in a public phone booth um, in the bus stand, Bangalore bus stand. Um, please, can you go and um, just pick them up and bring them home? and somebody else will um, come and collect them. I wasn't going to do that simply because 10 o'clock at night and anyone who knows um, India or Bangalore will realize, um, you know, that's not a place you want to go to. Yeah. Um, and, you know, 14 years back, it was um, worse than it is today. But uh, he said I'll, he'll call back in 15 minutes. And, you know, we didn't have mobile phones then. Yeah. So it was a landline. And 15 minutes later, he called and he said, you know, in these 15 minutes, I've tried other people, but there isn't anyone who is willing to go. So will you please do it? And even though, you know, good sense told me not to do it, I ended up going that night. And we went to the bus stand and we managed to find these girls. They had hidden behind the telephone booth. And we picked them up and I brought them home and I was never the same. They were 11 and 12 years old and I heard their stories, I saw firsthand what had happened, I heard them describe the pain and the trauma of um, you know the places that they were held in and I saw marks. You know one of the girls had a mark across her back, she was beaten with a steel chain and locked up in a in a dog cage and I just I just couldn't stay quiet about it anymore. Wow. And since then, you and your team have um, done tireless work and you guys have performed countless of rescue missions. Uh, more than 400 is the number of rescue missions that you and your team have performed to help rescue these young women and children. Uh, could you speak to some of those rescue missions and what other associated risks? Yeah. So when we um, talk about a rescue, for those who yeah. really don't know what happens, um, most times we have to build the entire investigation yeah. around the case because um, the police in India have a lot of priorities uh, for other things like law and order is a problem, terrorism is a problem. So uh, human trafficking kind of takes a back seat on this but because we are so concerned about these um, the vulnerabilities of the women and yeah. children especially and the fact that the longer they stay in these places the more difficult it is for us to rehabilitate them we have built a team of investigators who double up as clients who will um, go in as um, you know sometimes pose as pimps just oh. to be able to get the information yeah. um, you know they're undercover yeah, but that's the only way we yeah. can get the information. Where are these women and children being held? How are they being brought? How do we infiltrate this place? Yes. What are the escape routes if we're going in? So we map the entire place. Um, and now with technology, we geotag and, you know, we have all of that information ready before we go to the police yeah. with this. And we're able to... Um, tell them exactly how the inside looks like yeah. and um, the number of people inside. Yeah. Um, and sometimes we have real stories, That's you know, incredible. where the girls are able to talk 
yeah. to the um, to the men thinking their clients. But very often they'll say, "Please, can you help me out?" Yes. I have a number. I'm from this place. I just want to escape this. Yeah, that's amazing. So, yeah, as I understand, you work with a lot of uh, you know women who are in a beggary syndicate. Um, you free babies from supposed orphanages who sell them out or hire them out to mothers for begging purposes, and the list goes on. This mm-hmm. must be uh, very frightening. Um, ha- have you grown some thick skin over the time, or, or or do these stories and do these issues still? Um, affect you as much as they did that one night 14 years ago? Um, I'd like to say that I have grown some thick skin but no um, I think um, I'm just as um, vulnerable and just as moved and um, just as affected yeah. as I was um, those many years ago um, especially when it comes to babies. Uh, we've had cases uh, where women have um, hired babies it's very easy to hire babies yeah for as less as a dollar a day um, you oh, can hire them but okay. they make three times that amount easily in half a day so any one of us could easily be enabling this behavior yes. and this general attitude yes okay. there you go hope you got some idea of the problem of human trafficking that is happening in india and we are going to bring you part two of that exclusive interview with anita kanhaya in our next episode Don't go anywhere because after the break we are going to bring you all the breaking news from India as well as uh, new release Bollywood movies. Stick around.